It's the 40th anniversary of the Poetry Center. Maria Mazziotti Gillen founded it in 1980. The celebration includes a poetry reading, of course, by the winners of the annual Allen Ginsberg Poetry Awards. Like Model T Fords. Allen Ginsberg grew up in nearby Newark, and one of his mentors was Patterson's most famous poet, William Carlos Williams. I love poetry. I've dedicated my life to poetry, basically. and. I love hearing the different voices and just hearing the poems aloud that I've only read before, but then hearing the people read the poems is quite wonderful. An embarrassed one and another smack. This year, there were two first prize winners. One was Francesca Marguerite Maxime, this is called Feather. a poet who began her career well, in broadcast news. New guidelines that ban federal law enforcement from profiling on the basis of religion, national origin, or other characteristics can be a model. Francesca has a new career now as a life coach and a trauma healer, but she sees it all as connected. There's definitely a thread. The first question I had when I wanted to be a reporter, anchor person was, why do people do what they do? Why do, why does anyone do what they do? I was curious, I wanted to ask questions. When I was a little kid, I remember I was in church and in front of my mom, I asked the priest, Father Foley, you know, um, why are there no altar girls? <laughs> you know? Friday night at 8.45 But TV news was not making her happy. Francesca had already started writing poetry and had even published her first book, but there was a lot she didn't like about her life. I made a pivot because I was desperately unhappy. Desperately unhappy because my ex dumped me two days before the wedding, a family member tried to sue me about my book or you know, threatened to do it. Living in New York was difficult and, and it's just very difficult to, 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 to find any footing or community. And I was so unhappy because I couldn't understand why I was so unsuccessful at finding new relationship or finding meaning, finding purpose. These days, Francesca's life is all about finding purpose. She still asks questions, now as the host of her own podcast on the Ram Das Be Here Now Network. Welcome to the Rerooted Podcast with Francesca Maxime, trauma-sensitive mindfulness meditation teacher and poet. Hi everyone, I'm Francesca Maxime, and thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the Rerooted podcast on the Be Here Now Network. Um, it is the 13th of June. The good place uh, where Francesca finds herself now is, in part, because of her practice so of poetry. Poetry helped me pull in the threads of, oh, well maybe this is about my father, or maybe this is about my mother, or there's something unresolved here about you know, my family, or there's something unresolved here about my ethnicity, or there's something unresolved here about my social class, or about my way of being in the world. And, and the poetry gave me space to unpack some of that. Perhaps the one thing that I had in common with my half-sister was hair. She sporting a short afro in her high school photo, me with my curls locked down in ponytail braids for many of my middle and high school years then later worn loose and unleashed as I so became in college and then straightened out and highlighted again once I started my career on TV. And so in writing a poem like Tangled, what I think happens is, and it just sort of happened that I was literally on my couch at home. I was literally just like sitting there like pulling my, you know, sort of fiddling with my hair, playing with my hair, and then like, oh, you know, yeah, there's a little tangle here. I mean, look at it, it's a chia pet, you know? And then I was like, oh, the computer's here, I'll write it. I'm reminded that the basic nature of the hair on my head is curly. That no matter how much conditioner I put on and soaks in, that at the end of the day, it is still prone to knots. I'm making sense of my life in a way, pulling into what I see out there and how things impact me and land on me, but also like, how does it inform how I live and show up today? It is cool for August in Brooklyn, and so I wear my new black pleather pants to meet this bespectacled software attorney in a coffee shop with Blackbird in its name to talk about our respective careers and his desire to publish his poetry. I think all the judges felt that it was very risk-taking that 
There was a lack of fear and a kind of courage in the poem that I think really Allen Ginsberg would have, would have admired. I continue to circle the merry-go-round, wasting time, hoping that maybe I might eventually want to see a nice man like that naked. I continue showing up on coffee dates, sometimes in pleather, hoping that maybe one day, perhaps, I'll encounter someone who'll really appreciate them and give me that look which I'll shoot back that says, we know, they're coming off. Mm -hmm.